14? 41. That's 41, that's 14. Hello everybody and welcome to episode 14 of the Mace of Skeins podcast. My name is Macy and this is my little corner of YouTube where I talk all things knitting, sometimes crochet, and whatever crafty thing I happen to be doing that week. If this is your first time watching, well thank you. Thank you for clicking my video, I hope you come back. And if you're a returning viewer, well thanks for uh, clicking my channel again, seeing what I'm up to. Lots of you are probably watching for the first time because we are currently in quarantine. If you're not watching this in March of 2020, then you're probably out of quarantine already, but I mean, let's face it, if I don't talk about it now, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to have to talk about it later at the end of the video. So right now we are currently um, going through the whole coronavirus pandemic, which is absolutely terrible. And if you are outside, go inside. Please stay inside. Wash your hands. Don't infect anybody. If you feel like you're sick, stay inside because you might not know that you have it. And then you go outside and give it to somebody else who's more at risk. So just... I'm not a I'm not a doctor. I'm not a like scientific medical person. I I don't know anything. Like I know as much as the next person, I'll say that. But I do know, please be safe. Don't spread germs. If you feel sick, stay inside. Like there's no point in going outside right now. I've got yarn at the post office and I'm not going to get it. <sighs> I'll talk about that later. But please, everybody, don't stockpile toilet paper. You don't need to. Give some to somebody who doesn't have it. Just stay safe. This will be over soon, hopefully, fingers crossed. But in the meantime, here is some entertainment to keep your mind off of it. Um, this, I don't know if I've talked about it on any podcast before. Actually, I don't, no, I know I've talked about it. I had to have talked about it already, yeah. I don't know if I've worn it on any episodes, but this, dun da da da, I was eating something earlier and I got it on there. So ignore that spot right there. But this is my Zweig by Boyland Networks. Caitlin Hunter, Zweig. And don't these look like piano keys? Dee -dee 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 -dee. So um, I'll just jump right into it to get the podcast rolling. This, uh, it is knit in uh, Woolberry Fiber Co. I will link to it down below. This blue color is Chasing Clouds. And then this uh, like gray is called Smoke. And I... Um, this was my first sweater that I knit. <laughs> well, okay, I take that back. I knit um, a sweater out of Lion Brand, like, chunky, woolly, thick and quick. But this was, like, my first fingering weight sweater. I am not say that I did a pretty good job. Uh, this is all lace, but the reason why I did it in black, most of the time people do, um, like, the body in a darker color and this in a lighter color so you can see it. But since it was my first sweater, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do the lace and black because, um, well, one, it's not like really black, but uh, so you can't see it as much. Like if I mess up, like, let me get close. You can still see the lace, like how it's got the like little X looking things. But if I messed up, like I figured that like nobody would notice since it's, you know, in dark yarn. And uh, black yarn hides a multitude of sins. But this is also not a part of the pattern. I just was like getting upset at the fact that I had so much of this black yarn, or not, it's not black, okay, it's like charcoal. But I was getting so upset that I had so much of it like left, then I was like, I don't wanna just like have almost a full ball. Like I'm gonna like use it. So instead of, I realized it, you can see like I, I did like an inch of regular ribbing and then I switched to black. And you see this bind off? This is the one thing that I'm so upset about. This one. Everything else I love, but you see this bind off? How stretchy that is? Okay, you can't, it looks the same on camera. See this? Like I can open my hand all the way. This one I can't. Like I'm trying, but I can't. <laughs> I did the, um, I didn't do, like it. every time I pull it over my knuckles, like it hurts. So I just fold it and I keep it down here. But I forgot to do a stretchy bind off. Like I just wasn't paying attention. And I wanted to get it done quick, and so I did it like a regular one, which if you're doing sleeves and you've got wide hands, you should probably do a stretchy bind off. But yeah, so this, just in case you guys ask, I will also link to uh, my Ravelry page with it on there. If you're not already, add me on Ravelry. It is a Macy made, but I finally, you guys, finally updated my Ravelry. <laughs> I've had plenty of time on my hands the last couple of days. So I went through like my camera roll of like all the pictures that I had taken of my knitting and I was just going to put it like into the project page on Ravelry, just like add the pictures and I was like, wow, 
I don't even have a project page for something I knit back in October. So I went and I created a bunch. So if you want to see, I think, I think I still have a couple of things to add to it, but I'm not, not in any rush. So if you guys want to see the stuff that I've been knitting, it's all on my Ravelry page. Um, I'm trying to think of like anything you guys have, I just completely jumped into like what I was wearing, but, um, anything y'all have missed since my last pod? Oh, while I was filming the last podcast, I was like not feeling the best. I think you could hear it in my voice, but it turns out I had the flu. <laughs> like that night I went and I hung out with a friend and I was like, my body hurts very bad. And then the next day, like my whole body hurt. I felt like I got hit by a train. And then like I went to work and like for three days I had like 103 fever and I was like, hey, maybe I should go to the doctor. And I did, I had the flu. So that was something you guys missed. And then, oh, it was Paps' birthday. Happy late birthday, Paps! Mom got babes catered to the house and we like all chilled and like ate babes. It was great. I got him, the, he loves peanuts and popcorn and so I got him this like, supposed to be for cereals, but like you know at fancy hotels where you they have the big thing and you like twist it and like the cereal comes out? Well, I filled that up with like peanuts and then he twist it and like this, like they come out and he like cracked the shell and eat it. He liked it. He liked it a lot. But other than Paps' birthday and me having the flu, you didn't really miss much. Hey, um, foes? Finished objects? I actually have two that you haven't even seen before. My buddy Zach, he's the one that has a Stout Stitch podcast. It was just his um, second anniversary with the podcast oh, two, three weeks ago. But if you, have, if you haven't seen his podcast, if you don't know who he is, go check him out. I'll link to him in one of those corners. But for my birthday, he sent me yarn because he knows blue is my favorite color. And I hadn't used it because I was thinking like, okay, I'm gonna knit something and like I might buy more of this yarn so I could like make a sweater with it. And then uh, I was like, you know what? I just need to make something I want like, I, everything I'm knitting right now is like taking forever. I want something to finish. And so I cast on this. It's a triangle, triangle shawl. It kind of doesn't go with what I'm wearing. And I just added a tassel to it. It actually has a tassel in the picture, or in the pattern, but it's um, optional. And then you can fold it like this. It's just, you knit like a huge uh, triangle and then you seam it together. I didn't seam it right. You're supposed to do like a, um, what is it? The three needle bind off, I think, or Kitchener it together, I'm not sure. I just like whip stitched it. <laughs> And I was like, no, I'm not really gonna follow a pattern for it. I'm just gonna close the ends. Well, I wish I would have, because you see the spine going down, like this, uh, this line, that you can see it. Well, it's not like it doesn't match, like in the back, since it's, well, I guess it kind of does. But do you see what I mean? How it's like on this side, it hangs down way farther. Like it just doesn't, it doesn't line up. So I think I might unpick it and like redo it, but. At the same time, like when it's on, like when it sits like even on my back, it's sideways. So I have to like fiddle with it, which is kind of annoying. But I feel like if I'm wearing a jacket or something with it, which I'll have to wait until next season because it's already hot again, then like nobody's gonna know. But I couldn't decide if I wanted to keep the tassel or not. So I just tied it in a bow. I was gonna use a stitch marker to keep it on there, but I was like, nah, I'm not gonna waste a stitch marker. So I just tied it in a bow and you can see, like obviously you can see the bow tie. So I'm just gonna wear it like maybe a time or two with the tassel and then like wear it a couple times without it just to see like what I like better. I think I like the tassel. So I might just attach it and like cut the bow off. I mean like tie it in a bow or a knot and then cut the strings off. But yeah, this is the snowmageddon, snowmageddon, snowmageddon. I don't know how to say that word, but it's on the screen right now. It's a free pattern. It's kind of a um, pain in the ass to get it though. It's on Ravelry, but it takes you to this website and you have to like create an account and then you have to like purchase it even though it's free. You don't put your credit card in or anything, but you have to like put your name and your address. I did a fake one. And then um, like, it's weird. It like gets emailed to you. It's like, I just wish it was like a free Ravelry download, but I downloaded it and I have it. So if you don't want to go through all the trouble of creating an account, chat me and I'll send it to you. Cause it's free. So that's not like stealing or anything. And the second finished object, or object, I cast this on on St. Patrick's Day. Today is the 19th. And I was like, oh, that would be, I don't have anything green. I'm gonna knit Alex a green hat. And then I was like, oh, well, this is in sport weight yarn. Like, this is gonna take a little bit. I can't whip this up in a day. But I finished it yesterday and I blocked it. Um, and this yarn does not dry. Does not dry. This is the, um, well, okay, I'll just tell you what it is. It is the Grange hat. 
by Julie Knits in Paris. I don't know if there's a glare on it, but this, uh, I think I paid for this. It might have been a free pattern. I got this forever ago. I had it in my library, so I just was like, Alex, pick a hat. I'm going to knit you one. But it's so cool. You can't, oh yeah, you can. When I was taking pictures of it earlier to try to like show uh, my family, like I text them in the group chat because uh, mom is making like everybody say like, hello, we're still alive, like love you, good night every night with me, my brother, my sister, and like all of our spouses and we have to like let her know we're still okay. But I was texting them and I was like, oh, I just finished a hat and I was trying to take pictures of it, but you couldn't tell. But on this light, it looks pretty good. So it's got just like individual panels, so, like this one, the stripes go this way and then they go that way, and then it's divided by just these like garter ridges. It's pretty cool. And the, the best part of this whole entire thing, look at this, look at the crown decrease. Is that not awesome? It's like a fancy, like one of those fancy fractions, or um, like the, if you cut a tree open, like the inside of it. I don't, I kind of look like a, like a thumb in this, but it looks way better on Alex. I already asked him to model it, but uh, he said he didn't want to be on camera. Wow, I am blowing out. I, I promise I'm not this pasty. But this is what it looks like. And this is what it looks like. Turned around, you can see the cool, like, I just love that. I think it looks awesome. I would definitely, definitely knit this again. It's very, um, like, memorizable. Memor yeah, that's how you say it. Memorizable? No, that's not right. You can memorize this. Say that. Um, I knit it, like... This is just twisted rib, which I love twisted rib. I think that looks so much better than just regular. Well, okay, I can't. That's two by two. That doesn't make, I can't compare that. But um, I like, I love the look of twisted ribbing. Absolutely love it. And this whole top section, that's also twisted rib. So it's, it just makes it pop. And on the inside, like, that's what twisted rib looks like on the outside. And then when it's on the inside, it looks just like normal ribbing. At least I think so. I like it a lot, but um, yeah, I could easily read my knitting. Like once you have this, <laughs> I don't want to show you the pattern, but there's a chart. I'm not very good at reading charts. I can read color work charts, but like when it's got like the symbols and stuff, like I can, I'm not very good at reading those because I can never remember what the symbols mean. But um, it like she does have written out instructions, which I appreciate so much because there's been a couple of patterns that I've downloaded that have had like a cool stitch pattern and like it's just a chart and I'm like, like, yes, I could take the time to like color code it and then maybe I would memorize it because I remember colors better than I do like shapes. But it's just, nah. so I really appreciate the fact that she read out like row one because it's a four row repeat. So, or four yeah, for a repeat. So I appreciate that she like took the time to like write it all out. But like once you get like each section, like because it's divided by the ribs, um, I really strongly encourage you if you want like an intricate hat and you're still a beginner, do this one because it looks a badass. But it's I was watching Alex play like NBA 2K and it, or 2K 2K NBA whatever it's called. Um, but I was watching him play that and I was easily like in my head, I was like, one, two, three, pearl, one, two, three, pearl. Like it was easy, like I could, it's dark knitting is what I'm saying. Like it's a good, very good pattern. I highly recommend it. Again, it is called Grange by Julie Knits in Paris. Do you hear that? Do y'all hear that? That's my neighbor's house. Sounds like they're on an interview. Oh God, can they hear me? I don't care. Okay, so let's move on to whips. I really only have one whip going on right now because I finished my other two, but it is the Zweig, the same one that I'm wearing. So I've actually got a pretty, pretty good amount done. So this is what I'm talking about, how um, like people normally do dark for the body and then light, but check it out. Pretend digitally insert sis here. <laughs> I don't have that type of computer skill, so I'm not going to do that. But this is for sis. I finished the body. Um, I switched skeins right around here. You can kind of tell, but not enough that I'm going to rip it out. But I've got this far. I steam blocked this a little bit just to see, like, how the lace is going to turn out. And I, I mean, cause look at that. Look at that lace compared to this lace. Like you can barely see this, but this is, I'm proud of that. 
like super proud of that. I did mess up though. I think I've already talked about it. There's supposed to be like a green line right there. I just got my C1 and C2s mixed up and I didn't switch colors. Not gonna rip it out. You see how that has the blue line? It's fine. Not worried about it. She doesn't know what the pattern says, so it's not gonna bother her. But yeah, I got this done. I am halfway done with the sleeve. I could have been done with the sleeve by now. I'm probably started on the other one. Oh, I am doing this on hers because this is way too much pink yarn. Like this is like a whole skein. <laughs> I mean, not a whole skein. I've got, I took some out of it, but like, this is a lot. Like this is a big, here's a full skein. Here's that one. Like that's a lot just to not use. So I'm definitely gonna do the, the cuffs on hers with it. But um, I'm probably barely gonna break into this third skein. Cause on mine, like I have, oh, you guys, sorry. I normally podcast at like 10 in the morning and right now it's uh, nine o'clock at night. So we filmed um, a music video for Alex and I will link it down below if he's uploaded it. If not, I'll just link to his regular channel and you can go see it. Also, he's the one, if you guys hear my theme song at the beginning, he created it. So if you need a theme song for anything, hit him up. But yeah, anyways, I could have been done with that sleeve and like finished this next one if I wouldn't have cast on Alex's hat and been like, oh, by the way, that w this hat is for him. This is not my hat, that's Alex's. Um, if I wouldn't have done that one and been like, I'm gonna knit a hat all day. This is all I'm doing for the next two days. This would have been done. So now this is like my, uh, what I'm gonna do for the next, who knows how long. I'm just gonna do this until I finish it. Uh, I would be knitting on my sorrel sweater or sorrel or however you say it but ah, okay I can't complain there's lots of way worse things that other people are going through than what I'm doing right now but um I ordered yarn for my sorrel sorrel I don't know how you say it. it'll be on the screen um the sweater everybody's seen it I know you have it's the one that's like a mock turtleneck and it's got those like badass braids they're not braids but the things that come down and it's like a faded sweater that you hold with mohair. If you haven't seen it, you've been living under a rock. Okay, only the people who have Ravelry, like people who are watching this and aren't knitters, you, there's no way you would have seen it. But everyone who's on Ravelry or that follow a bunch of knitters on Instagram, I know you've seen this sweater. It is so awesome. It's like the top 10 or in Ravelry in the hot right now. Like it's always, it's for the last like three weeks been in the top like five. Um, well, I want to cast it on like super bad and that was gonna be my corona cast on That sounds terrible for people that aren't knitters But when you start a project like when you start it you cast it on like I casted this on on st. Patty's Day and then like I'm done with it now But there Christy glass. I think started the hashtag Maybe or it could have been Lola Bean. I don't know who it was but Christy started it She's the one who I saw it from and she just did like, it's either COVID cast on or Corona cast. I think it's Corona cast on. Where since we're quarantined and as knitters, like everybody's got a stash, like you can't see it, but right behind is a bunch of yarn. And so we're trying to knit through our stash as much as we can. So whatever we cast on is our Corona cast on. So that was going to be mine. And Cake Wool, if you guys haven't ordered yarn from Cake Wool, she's in New York. Oh my gosh, she is so helpful. She's so nice. And she took like, 15 minutes out of her day to like help me because I was, I found one of her colorways that I love called mushroom, looking through the mushroom glass or mushroom in the glass, mushroom by the glass. Something that had to do with mushroom and glass. Broken, I can't remember what it is. But I love that colorway and I loved Coco, which is another one of her colors. And I wanted to do the Sorrel or the Sorrel sweater with it. And I just like chatted her and I was like, hey, like oh, which color do you think would look better? Like if I held the mohair that was like the bright blue mohair or if I held the yellow mohair. And she laid out like six different color combinations for me to choose from. And then when I told her, I was like, oh, I like that one. She unskeined it and laid them all out. She's so, so helpful. I have a picture of it so I can show you guys what it looks like. This is what the yarn looks like. You know what, I can pop this in. I don't need to show it on my phone. But this is what the yarn looks like. Is this not beautiful? So it's gonna be, I'm gonna fade like these top colors all the way down and I'm gonna hold it together with the mohair. So it's gonna be this awesome like sweater that's got like a haze of yellow on it. Oh, it's gonna look so good. So the colors that I was like inspired from, I guess is what you can say, is one of my, well, my favorite flowers are daisy, blue daisies, but um, Johnny Jump Ups, I think 
that's the real name. I don't know if that's because you know how like lamb's ear like that. It's got like a scientific name and like or it's like biological name, I guess. But everybody calls it lamb's ear. You know, I or maybe I'm wrong on that. Anyways, Johnny Jump Ups. They're the flowers that are. I'll pop in a picture, but they're yellow, purple, and cream. And I love those flowers. When we were little, mom, uh, me and sis, I'm an identical twin, if you guys don't know that. The Zweig I'm knitting, the green one, that's for my sister. But uh, we had a, our room, mom painted all of our room, like I wish I had a picture so I could pop it in, but I don't. Um, our rooms, like we had a jungle theme uh, one time, we had um, a Juicy Couture theme room, and then we had like a princess ballroom thing, and then we had like zebra and pink and uh, orange, and then we had... Um, like a Tiffany blue, and then uh, one day when I was at work, sis decided to paint our room gray and like put in hardwood floors without my say. Still salty about that. Um, anyways, but when we were in like third, third or fourth grade, I think, um, mom was putting like, our walls were yellow and she was doing flowers and um, like the circle part of the flower, she did paper plates, but she covered it in like fabric. And so it was like this like 3D like textured thing. I think it was, that, that might have been our zebra one. Cause it was all yellow walls with like bright neo, neon flowers, but like the center of them, like some of them were like leopard print, some were zebra, it was really cool. But I kept trying to explain to her like the one, mom, I know you remember this, the one flower that I wanted was like the one that was white on the outside with like the purple coming out of the middle. Um, and we couldn't figure out what flower that was. I had seen it at like some restaurant outside in the flower bed and I could never remember or explain it good. But now mom, 15 years later, it's a Johnny Jump Up flower is the one that I was trying to explain. <laughs> so now I'm knitting a sweater like that one. So I guess that's okay. That yarn right now, I got an email from the USPS or UPS, whichever one it was, saying um, there's a, like your order could not be delivered, refused uh, delivery or something like that. And I was like, what the heck? So I called them, the post office opened at 10 and it was like 9.50 and I was like, oh my God, what's going on? So I called and I was like, hi, um, my package didn't get delivered. It said it was refused. Like I, there's no way I would have refused my package. But right now, ooh, I just kicked the camera, sorry. Um, the front desk at our apartment is like closed, like shut down for like health reasons because they don't want to infect the people that work at the front desk just in case any of us have the coronavirus but um it's shut down so like we can't go to the gym we can't do the clubhouse or anything like our front desk people are at their houses which is good they need to stay put so but that also means that our packages aren't getting delivered so there i called the post office and i was like yeah so it's like my apartment front desk is shut down and she instantly was like do you live it and then she put my apartment name and i was like yes and she's like, we've got about 80 packages here. And I was like, oh. So are you guys going to like deliver them to the doorstep? Or she was like, no, you have to come pick them up. Is there, or you have to come pick them up. Is there anything else? And I was like, oh. no, that's okay. Thank you. And she hung up. So they're at the post office, all 80, around 80 packages. So all of my neighbors, um, there's, there's all of her packages are at that post office. And it's literally like not even like seven minutes away. So like we could easily go and pick them up. But... Uh, we're quarantined right now because we've been exposed to somebody who has the virus. So if you have been exposed to somebody, you're supposed to stay inside for like 15 days. So I just scooted off my chair. Um, like we're, there's not like we're not going out. Like we're not going to go get it. And uh, I've already tried being like, can somebody please go get it for me? But you have to have my ID and like you have to be me to pick up my own package, which is very upsetting. So my cake wool, all, what, six skeins of it, is just sitting inside of the post office not being knit with. <laughs> yes, like I said, I know, there's way worse things happening right now than some knitters yarn being stuck somewhere and they can't, can't uh, do the COVID cast on or Corona cast on, whatever they're calling it. And I'm so, um, just knowing that my yarn is there and I can't knit with it just drives me insane. But I have a full stash of yarn that I could shop from, which y'all need to be shopping your stash right now. Like now is the time. Also, shop all of the vendors, like DFW Fiberfest. That's the Fiberfest that I started this podcast with. Like I vlogged the whole thing. Um, it got canceled. And like I was in like tears when I read that email saying that it was canceled because that is like a such, like I look forward to those three days, like all year. Like that is my paradise. Like 
all year long. I'm like, oh, not gonna buy that year. I'm gonna save that money because I'm gonna buy it at FiberFest. Oh, I'm gonna do that at FiberFest. Oh, I'm gonna get this at FiberFest. Like all year I talk about it. My coworkers have to deal with it. Family has to deal with it. Alex has to deal with it. I just, that's the one thing I look forward to all year. And it got shut down and, or not shut down, canceled. I thought it was gonna be postponed, but it's not. It's shut down and uh, I mean, I'm very like, Happy that they're doing that, they're taking safe precautions, because, come on guys, that's like 800 people in like a small room. Like, that's not safe. It's, I mean, when this whole like pandemic's going on, like, that's not safe. Normally, yeah, that would be fine, but I totally understand why. Like, obviously I can't be upset about stuff that I can't control, but um, it's very upsetting. But all of those vendors that were there, there's a list still on the Fiberfest website of all of the vendors. And we, please y'all, if you were gonna go to Fiberfest and you were gonna buy yarn from them, do it because that's their, like, that's what their income is, is selling yarn. And if they couldn't go to the festival and they can't like sell their, like vend there, that means they're losing money. So they already have the yarn dyed up. So if you go to their shop, like maybe it's on their Instagram, maybe it's on their like Facebook profile, or maybe they have a website that's like linked to it, go support them, you guys. Go buy their yarn. That's what I've been doing. I mean, we're all just chilling on the couch so we can easily go some online shopping. So if you're not, or if you're going to a fiber fest and it got canceled because of the coronavirus, still support those vendors because they need your help. Or if you don't want to buy any yarn, which you're a crazy person, you can still do donations. Like I donated like to the Fiberfest, like the board. So if you, I'll link, leave all the links down below if you would just want to donate, but go support those people, go support the vendors, all the yarn dyers, cause you know you love their yarn and now's the time to buy it. But if you're also like, if you're trying to save money, cause I know lots of people have been like laid off from their jobs because of them, like small businesses can't be like supported right now. So they're shutting down sadly, but um, if you don't want to go and buy yarn, shop your stash. Come on, people. I shopped my stash, and guess what? I found three different sweaters that I can knit. That I, I mean, granted, I did have them planned for other yarns, but do you guys remember this <laughs> that I haven't talked about in, like, who knows how long? My Duchess and Dragon shawl? This guy? Yeah, you remember it. It's been a while, but it's still here. This thing is huge. It's like a beast, and I completely forgot about it. Like, I did not realize how big it was. And I've still got um, like another two pattern repeats. But guess what? I freaking hate knitting with mohair by itself. By itself. I just purchased a sweater's quantity with mohair. So hopefully I like holding it uh, with other yarn. But this is driving me insane. Knitting with mohair by itself. That's why I stopped knitting on this because I hate it. I hate it. I mean, I like the shawl. Like, do you think I'll like it when it's done. Yeah, probably. Am I like, I don't know why I picked this because I don't have an outfit that would match this. Um, it was just Christy Glass was doing a knit along and I love her. So I was like, oh my God, yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I mean, I didn't know what the yarn was gonna be, but I was like, yeah, sign me up, add to cart. But I did it and I don't like pattern. No offense to the person who wrote the pattern. Like it's a great pattern. If I was knitting this, like if this wasn't mohair, I'd probably knit it in something else. But um, I hate this. <laughs> So, uh, I'm like, I could just bind off, but I'm not going to do that because I'm on a mohair row. So, um, I decided that I'm going to frog this thing, all of this. Cause this is two right now. Um, this is like two, there's one skein in here. Here's the half skein and I've got a whole other one. So this is a three skein, three skeins of this green yarn and then one skein of this mohair. So guess what you guys, that's a sweater, not a shawl. I mean, it could be a shawl. I mean, it is a shawl right now, but I'm not gonna wear this, so I'm gonna frog it. And this, <laughs> I am gonna hold this together. So when I shopped my stash, this I bought last year at Fiberfest. It's Suburban Stitcher. And you guys, I'm gonna leave a link to this. She, if y'all know Hohi, <laughs> Hohi Locatelli, Hohi, Hohi, however you say it, um, she has her own bag company now, and she's got gorgeous bags. And Suburban Stitcher, Diane, um, partnered with her and they've got one, I'm not a big pink person, but it's hot pink. So if you guys like pink, go snatch it up. Um, Cause I think she's got a limited quantity, but this is Suburban Stitcher on her sock base. It's called a masquerade. But this I bought last year at Fiberfest. I've got, oh, I've got the hiccups. I've got two skeins of it. It is this beautiful color. Um, it's just purple and it's got some like, Darker purple, lighter purple, and like goldy brown, and like maroon, or not maroon, 
well it does have maroon in it, um, navy blue specks in it. I was going to knit the um, LYS by Andre Mowry. It's the little yellow sweater, but it's got these like, <laughs> these bobble stitches going down and it goes right across your boobs. And this is kind of a fleshy color and I don't want a bunch of nipples going down. I said it. I had to say it. Like I don't, like, I didn't, Caitlin, you're the one who put that idea in my head. I was totally fine with knitting this like fleshy purple um, until I told her like, this is my yarn, this is a sweater. And she was like, you're gonna look like a cat. And so now I can't get that out of my head. So if you've already knit the LYS in like a pink color, sorry if I just ruined it, but I, if I have the pattern, like I bought it, so I'm gonna knit it at some time, but I would probably do it out of a yellow or like a navy blue or something that's like not something the color that you turn when you're cold. So I'm not gonna knit it at that, but what I am gonna do, Andrea Mallory's new pattern, Pink Velvet, also it's blowing up just like the um, the Sorel Sorrel sweater. You've probably seen that one. I'm gonna hold it. This is gonna be the body of it, and then it's got like this, like I'll pop in a picture, but it's got this color work, and it's, uh, I think it's supposed to be Surrey Alpaca, but and Alpaca makes me itch, so I'm not gonna do the Alpaca, but I'm gonna use this mohair, because I've got tons of it, and I'm gonna hold it with this, um, ooh. You see all of the carpet fuzzies on that. I'm gonna hold it back here. It's just black lace. It's Knit Picks Chroma Lace just in black. Um, I'm gonna hold it together with this because it's gonna make this like awesome like darker gray and because you're supposed to hold two strands of this but I don't know if you see how thin this is because this is mohair lace weight. Um, I'm gonna hold two lace weights together to create a fingering because that is also tiny which I think I'm, it still doesn't meet the size requirement, but I've got tons of this, so I could just hold this double with this, so like have three strands going if I wanted to, but I think that's gonna look so good. So I shopped my stash and I have another sweater. Also, this green yarn, since I've got a ton, I need y'all's help with this, because there is a sweater that I was thinking of. This is considered bulky. Oh wait, no, this is DK, yes is, um, oh, by the way, that was Suburban Stitcher. This is um, Asylum Fibers. This is in the lace space. Ooh, there's mohair all in my mouth. Um, and on my face, oh my God. Um, it's the mohair lace space in Argog. The colorway is Charred, and then the green one is the Daft DK base, and the color is Gumption. So this is also, um, she's the same dyer of my Soldana sweater, but this is what this yarn looks like. I've showed it like a thousand times on, when I was talking about the other, like this, when I throw back forever ago when I was talking about it, but um, there's a sweater that I wanna knit, and I'll pop it on the screen, because I'm blanking on the knit Metropolis or Manhattan, something like along those lines. But uh, I want to knit that, but it says that it's in bulky weight, which I don't believe because I was looking at everybody's like project pages and I was zooming in on the yarn and they all say bulky weight, but it all looks DK. So maybe it's like a, like a, see, I'm used to bulky as like, let me get all up close and personal while I grab a skein of yarn. Um, this like, this is what I'm used to is bulky. This is Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick, which is a uh, bulky like you can see how fat that is and this is considered bulky but that is like half the size of this so it's like oh, oh, oh. I'm the reason why I'm not in baseball but like this is bulky which is like okay but that's also bulky and apparently what the sweater was knit in is bulky so I'm like mm, something that up because uh it's not the same weight. So I think I might be able to get away with doing that sweater in DK. So let me know, cause I, I mean, I could knit a party top, but I already have one, which is probably something I should do. Like I need to rip out the bind off and make it longer. Anyway, um, like, I don't know. I don't want to knit another party top cause that yarn, if I do a crop, my Soldana not so crop was kind of cropped. And I don't want to have like two like crop sweaters that are like close to the same color. So I'm like, I don't know what to do, but the one Metropolis or Manhattan, whatever it's called, it's a turtleneck, which I love made some turtlenecks. And I want to do that one and I've got enough yardage to do it, but the yardage requirements is for the bulky yarn, which wouldn't that mean more? Like, wouldn't that mean I have more yarn if this is DK and that's a knit in a bulky or is it the opposite? Like, 
the yardage requirements were bulky. If I, I meet that requirement and I've got DK, does that mean I have more yarn or less? I'm not sure if you knit the sweater and you see it like go to the Ravelry page like all of like it doesn't look bulky it looks DK maybe worsted but I think I could knit it with that or if you've got like a DK weight long sleeve sweater idea that ca calls for three skeins let me know because I need to knit it and like I got that and then there was another um sweater combination that I thought of like when I was shopping my stash but I can't remember it right now but um if you guys live in DFW uh, Texas and you have been outside today it was like when you woke up it was like totally fine weather and then it was like I got an alert saying we're under tornado warning I'm like what the heck and I look outside it's totally fine and then it goes like this orangey yellow color like peachy sky and it's like alright some bad's happening then it like thunderstorm like thunderstormed for like a good 30 minutes like it was white outside the rain was that hard then like I was chilling in our room, we've got blackout curtains, and then we came back outside and it was like sunny. I don't know what's going on outside, but it's making my little storage unit extremely humid. And I've already got breathing problems to begin with, so this is not working. So I'm going to end this podcast pretty soon. But, uh, so I've got lots of time on my hands, so I'm finally going to film those how-to videos. <laughs> How to, the first one I'm gonna film is like with my gaudy sweater, cause I still haven't worn that. You guys, I finished it like St. Patrick's Day. So like a year ago, I finished it. Uh, well, no, I cast it on, on St. Patrick's Day. Anyways, it's almost been a year since I finished it. And I haven't even worn it cause the ends aren't woven in yet and it hasn't even been blocked. So I'm gonna finally film that tutorial. Also, I need to do like a, since everyone's got time on their hands, I can teach y'all how to knit. <laughs> so I'm gonna do like a how to like cast on, bind off, like knit stitch, purl stitch, stockinette, garter, all of that goodness. Um, but leave in uh, the description, huh. you can tell I haven't done this in a bit. Uh, leave in the comments down below of what you want to see because I need more ideas because I'm for sure gonna do the um, weaving ends video because I've asked you guys about that for the, the last three times and I've been like, I'm busy, I had work. But now I'm at home for the next who knows how long. So I can easily film that. Um, so let me know what you want to see down below because I need a list to start banging through. Also, what's a good color to film with? Like, I know, like, obviously I'm not gonna, like, show tutorials in white yarn or black yarn because those are, like, hard to see. But, like, that green kind of looked good on camera. I don't know, I've got, like, a whole rainbow to choose from. But what's a, like, what's a good yarn to teach with? Like, I don't think I would do light blue because I feel like that would be hard. Maybe not, like, orange because that's kind of, like, in your face. If you got color ideas, also let me know. And what's your COVID cast on? Or what's your Corona cast on? What are you casting on with these next 15 days of quarantine? Or have you already cast something on? Because if you have, let me know. Also, you guys, I've been getting lots of like tags in Instagram, like for giveaways. Keep that up because it helps like helps you to begin. Like, you know when it's like tag three friends, tag me. Who cares? Like even if like I don't know you like if you don't hopefully I mean follow me here's my Instagram but uh if you like tag me in it like one that gives you an entry and if I see it in time because I have my notifications turned off until like I click the app then it'll be like four on that little thing of like notifications um but if I see it and I like still in the time frame I'll comment back and tag two of my people and tag you in it so it's like we both get an entry so if you see that, tag me. And also people have been like, in my story, it made me so happy. They're like, oh, I'm like, like took a picture of their laptop with their knitting. And they're like, oh, I'm watching this podcast. Like my friends, Haley and Bree, they've got a podcast called The Woolies and you guys need to, need to, need to watch it. She's a weaver, Bree's a weaver and Haley's a knitter. I think Haley's learning how to weave, I think. She's the one that sent me the, um, she's got her Instagram name is Lock Knits. I'll pop it up on here. And, uh, Brian, her Instagram, she's got like a whole weaving thing. It's called Moon and Yarn. So she's got like this little business. Y'all, she put weaving kits together. It makes me kind of want to learn how to weave. But I have way too many hobbies right now. I can't learn how to weave. So you learn how to weave and buy her kits. There's one I'll put in a picture of it. It's got yellow and blue yarn. If y'all don't know, my favorite color is royal blue. Second favorite color is okay tied with red and yellow like cherry red and um like bright sunshiny daff um daffodil is that the yellow flower yeah. yellow Sunf not sunflower yellow that's too mustardy but like yellow like blue red and yellow are my three favorite colors and purple is like number four but like she's got a whole weaving kit with like blue and yellow yarns you guys you guys <laughs> if somebody wants to buy that and do a weaving and send it to me no i'm kidding don't do that 
If you weave, you keep. Anyways, go buy her weaving kits, and haley has got all of her patterns. I think they're either 50% off, or I think she, or I think she just marked them all as free. I think so. I downloaded one of her patterns, and Alex was torn between her... Oh god, I'm gonna butcher it. Bryn, Binks, Brian's, some I'll pop it up on the screen. I can't I can't remember it. He was torn between both of those, but I already had this pattern in my stash, so I was like, you know what? I'll knit you this one first because oh pick that up later. Hers it has cables in it, and I'm not. I I'm I'm not really sure how to cable. <laughs> not very good at it. I've tried it, not good at it. But she's got another hat that doesn't have cables in it, and that's the one. I've got a skinny yarn. Okay, I'm rambling. But I bought a skinny yarn in Galveston, and I bought it to knit one of her patterns with. So I'm going to cast that one on later. Who knows? I might be able to cast that on during my quarantine period. But go get some of her patterns, because she's got, like, she's got a lot on Ravelry right now. I'll pop all of her information right here. But go watch their podcast. They've only got three episodes out right now. So you can jump on, watch all three, and then you can be like, I've been a fan since the beginning. Like, you can say that. So I'll leave all of their information. Me and Haley have been chatting all day. She's really cool. Um, go watch their podcast, you guys. That's pretty much it. I'm dying of sweat, and I really don't want to sweat in a hand-knit sweater. Don't want to. I gotta block it and wash it anyways because it got food on it, so I guess I can sweat if I need to. Okay, anyways, I'm rambling. Keep in mind, um, guys, please, like I said at the beginning of the video, take care of yourselves. Take care of other people. If you might be sick, don't go around anybody else. Six-foot rule. Y'all, this is social distancing right here. You could be in a complete different state, and we're still hanging out right now. And I saw a quote, um, it was on, I shared it on my Instagram, uh, but it says, go wash your hands like you just ate a bag of Cheetos and you're about to knit with white yarn. That is what I'm going to leave you guys with. <laughs> okay, go take a shower, go wash your hands, go Germex, hand sanitizer, everything, or hand sanitize, I guess. Um, shop your stash, cast things on, tag me in your pictures, let me know what you're knitting, um, and also please give me some ideas of what to uh, make how-to videos on, because I've got the time, you guys, I'm not going anywhere. All right, well, I hope this cheered up your day, gave you a little break from all the media that you've been seeing about all the bad things that are going on right now, but this will pass. And then, like, remember in, like, five years, we'll be like, oh, wow, remember that? Hopefully. I mean, yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to leave you on that. Um, I love all of you guys. Please stay safe. Um, yeah, okay. Well, have a great night, you guys, and I will see you later. I hope you look forward to my how-to series, and I hope you learned a thing or two. Keep knitting. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> have y'all seen that? What's that? Remember on like Instagram or Vine or whatever that was where um, the trend is like this is a bottle of like liquor and like people flick the thing and like that just hit my light bulb and there's a thousand wonders why that didn't just shatter. Anyways, they did this thing and they flick it. Okay, I'm rambling and I didn't even take a drink. <laughs> <laughs>